G'day, Justin Hogg here from RightSource, talking about business and achieving your purpose in your business. Having started my own business and working through that process and worked with a number of, a number of business owners who've started their own business for a, a purpose that they want to achieve and driving forward with it and with different levels of success, one of the really interesting topics that comes out and I, is how much, as a business owner, how much should I pay myself or should I pay myself? That's a really interesting question and I think there's a, a few challenges or there's a lot of challenges people have with that, especially when you've started your business for a purpose. So say you've started something just because you have a passion for it. You don't want to, I mean, you want to make money, you want it to be a business, but that's not why you started. You started your business, you had a purpose because you had a passion about something and that's what you wanted to do. I mean, I completely get that. That's why I started my business because of my passion for people and that's why I'm here, that's why I'm helping, that's why I'm doing this. Along that road and no matter what your passion is, for your business to continue it needs to be sustainable and this is really probably the core question in terms of paying yourself, the sustainability. So first of all, do you pay yourself? Yes. Why? Because you need to survive, you need to live. Now to, to live you need cash coming in in some respect so there needs to be a recognition that you're spending your time in this business and that you're receiving a wage or you're receiving fair pay for the work you're doing. Now, I'm not gonna get into volunteering or for those who are personally, they may be wealthy enough that they don't need, they don't need a job and they're doing something purely for, uh, I suppose, non-financial purposes and they're doing something they love and they don't need to be paid. But generally speaking, when you start up a business, there needs to be a income so that you can survive. So. That's the first reason you need to pay yourself pretty self-evident that you need a wage to be able to eat, to be able to live, to be able to you know, do the things that is part of life. Now, some people say, okay, well, I can get by on a certain amount. Well, that, that's fair. So you'll see business owners who pay themselves below market rate. So they're like, the skills that they bring to that workplace are worth you know, $100,000, $200,000 a year but they pay themselves 50 because that's all they need to survive and that's fine. The other issue you need to look at in terms of sustainability is the sustainability of the business. So if you're only paying yourself a, a below market rate wage because your business can't afford to, well, that's a question mark on whether your business can remain sustainable. And this is important for a number of reasons. First of all, if you're running a business that isn't sustainable, it's not gonna survive without you. So that means if you, for whatever reason, need to take time out of the business, your business could fail. So that puts it at a higher risk and it doesn't, I suppose, for me, when I'm working with business owners, I want them to be successful today, but I want them to be successful tomorrow. So I want them to be able to continue to work in whatever capacity they can now and into the future. So if you're paying yourself a market rate wage or however much you'd have to pay someone else to do the work, if you needed to step out of the business for a period of time, you could employ someone in the business and the business wouldn't suffer. So that's that's important. The other part that's important from that then from a, a mental aspect in terms of owning a business is when you start a business, you are both an owner and an employee. So you own the business, but also you're doing a lot of the work. As your business evolves and hopefully as it grows, those two roles of owner and employee should start to separate and become more distinct because the role of an owner is more of that of an investor, is that you are responsible for the assets of the business, you've got an investment in the business and you should get a return on that investment. But as an owner, you don't necessarily, or you shouldn't necessarily need to be involved in the day-to-day -day operations. So it's more of a stand back and it can be more of a strategic approach. As an employee, well, that is in, in the mix, that's in day-to-day, -day, getting stuff done, being part of the mechanics of the business. So they're two very different roles. And depending on your exit strategy and why you started the business, you might want that purpose that you, you might be trying to, you know, get plastics out of the oceans, doing something like that. To do that, you don't necessarily need to do all the work to achieve that goal, but you need to provide the structure so that that purpose can be achieved. This is where it's important that sometimes being that owner, being that oversight of the business, that's actually what you're trying to do. You don't need to do the work. 
So back to my initial point, why do you pay yourself? Well, if you understand the value that you're bringing to the business and what it would cost to have someone else employed, it allows you to step out of that operational role sooner and become just that strategic role in terms of driving that purpose more and letting other people get the work done to, draw, to, to make sure that purpose is achieved. I suppose the last aspect with that, which is interesting, is when you see business owners who work 80 hours a day, 80 hours a day, feels like 80 hours a day, 80 hours a week, um, you know, drive themselves crazy and it's to make sure the business succeeds. Now, again, if you pay yourself fairly for that 80 hours, so if you looked at a market and said, well, actually, you're doing two people's roles, well, okay, pay yourself for two people. That's okay. I don't have a problem with that. That's the work you're doing. It's a fair rate in the market. Pay yourself for that. That way, at least you get to understand how much it costs your business and gives you a better indication as to whether that business is sustainable. Also, if you do step out of the business, you are gonna have to employ two people to do that job. So it gives you a better indication of, I suppose, the cost that the business will need to incur so that you can step out. Or if you do wanna step back to 40 hours a week, you employ someone and you, it, it gives you that understanding of how you can move the pieces around in your business better. And ultimately, if you wanna work 80 hours a week and that's what you wanna do and that's what you love, that's great. Just pay yourself for the work you do because you deserve it. So that's, should you pay yourself? Well, obviously my answer to that is absolutely, I completely believe that any business owner who's working in the business should be paying themselves for the work they do. The question then is, well, when do you pay yourself? Especially if you're a startup. Now, I've definitely gone through this process and I've seen others go through this process. When you're starting up your business, just especially if you start from nothing, if you start blank slate, I'm just gonna create something from nothing. You, you don't have any funds to pay yourself. You can't pay yourself. You need to have a plan as to when you, you can pay yourself. And that really becomes, you know, as you grow the business, acknowledging the fact that you're working for free, but having a plan as to well, at what point do I start paying myself? And usually that is when the business starts to become sustainable. So you move through your proof of concept, you're starting to get clients paying or, or products sold, and you're starting to see your revenue. Well, as soon as that happens, you need to be asking your questions can the business afford to sustain my wage? And continually ask that process. And it's, it's tricky. But there should be a point when you're running your business that you feel that it's sustainable. That, hey, this business, it works and it's going to keep working. So as a, as a startup or when you're going through that process, when you get to a point where you think, yes, I think this business is worth investing my time and continuing to develop. And I think, I believe it's got legs. That's the point in time you should be looking, well, okay, let's have a look at what I'm doing in the business and how much at a market rate that would cost. And then working out, because you might not be able to get go straight to that straight away, working out the process to get to that market rate. So it might be a stepped approach and you work up to being paid that market rate, but at least you're aware of it and at least you're making a conscious decision about how you're getting there. Now, sometimes things go wrong and when you are running a business and you're the owner, sometimes things don't go well. And one of the first things that can give and that you can quite often do as a business owner is say, well, look, times are tough. I'm gonna cut my wage to help make sure the business survives. Now, I think that's completely right thing to do. And in a lot of instances helps send a good message. Obviously, personally, you need to make sure you can afford it. It's your business. You're still getting the value out of the business. And it's often something that can be done quite quickly. But if you do, again, if you do take that, you know, I'll take the hit first, you still need to have a process of coming back to getting paid. If you can't get to, back to being paid, it flags a question of whether your business is sustainable. And that then needs to be looked at because you don't want to be just hanging on all the time. You want things to be working. The last aspect in terms of paying yourself is like, oh, well, I don't take a wage, but I, I take the dividends. Or I'm not taking a wage, but I'm planning to sell the business in five years and that's when I'll get my payback. Well, again, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that, that's completely fine. But just make sure that it's not just wishful, wishful thinking. Make sure that you understand, well, this is what I'm worth in terms of the contribution to the business. And I will get this through whatever means you decide, whether it's wage, whether it's dividend, whether it's selling the business, whatever. It also will fit in with your personal circumstances and definitely getting advice in terms of 
how that fits in, completely relevant, but make sure you do it and make sure you do it on purpose and make sure you're doing it with a plan. And that's really, that's really it for paying yourself. I, I think it's really important for business owners to take the time and, and understand that they are contributing value to the business and they should be recognized for that value in whatever way you want, but you should be recognized for that value. And the importance of having a sustainable business that is there for you to achieve your purpose, not only today, but into the future. That's probably it for today. Um, thanks for joining us. I hope you had a, a bit of an insight there into my thoughts in terms of business owners out there and whether, you, whether and how you should pay yourself as a business owner. Um, if you found this video useful, please feel free to check out the other videos we've got on the YouTube channel. There's a lot of stuff there that helps you as a business owner manage your business and, and I suppose understand those aspects of business that might be helpful for you in continuing on your journey. If you like, please feel free to subscribe and if you've got any other questions, definitely feel free, free to chuck them in the comments. I will definitely make an effort to get back to any questions that come through there. Otherwise, thanks for taking the time to check out this video. It's Justin Hogg from Right Source. Thanks for watching.